<laughs> a bit like a bit like a camera. Oh, I'm there. There, there we go. Hide there yeah, I mean, go. I even bought the scarf. How about that? I'd be hiding that too. if I was you. No, <laughs> you're going to be good to me, aren't you? Well, like, so we've got quite. We're going to grill you. Going to grill me? We're going to grill you because, like, so like a George of... Foreman grill. If if you survive, <laughs> yes. If you if you survive, yes. We'll see uh, how you get on. So obviously QPR losing their tenth away Premier League game of the season, a record that hasn't been achieved since 1964 of Sunderland. So what is going on wrong away from home? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. We are the Rangers boys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I'll make sure the phone's turned off. Uh, <laughs> what was you saying about the bad At least you're still in good spirits. <laughs> yeah, um, woeful no, away from. I mean, what is going wrong? Oh, mate, I don't know. I, mean, I just I, Every time they go out there now, they must be thinking, where are we going to get another point from? Do you know what I mean? I've got more points in my neck to cover than, than, than Rangers. <laughs> and, and, I mean, the fans had every right last week. You see the mm. couple of fans. Oh, it's going again. I don't know why it's going again, but oh, look, dear. we are the Rangers, yes. boys. <laughs> um, I think someone's playing a laugh now. I think um, they are, you know. I'll turn it off. I did plan it, to be honest with you. I know you did. <laughs> yeah. um, but, look, it's dreadful form. And any fan wanting to get on the coach to go to away trips, oh, I feel sorry for them right now. Because I don't know when the point's going to come from. Was it justified, does, does the clash with Clint Hill and the supporters? Do you think Clint Hill should have reacted it's a difficult that way? One, he have I, I've it? seen a lot of ups and downs at Rangers, and I've seen fight, uh, you know, fans fight within, and you've seen mm. that as well. At some I've seen that, yeah, awesome, yeah. But when you're down the bottom, it happens even more, because you've got people that will say, well, back them, back them, back them. And other people saying, you know, let him go. But have Are you ever seen a player have to, have to be pulled back from... I have seen it before at Rangers, to be honest with you. I have seen it. And it's just one of those things, you know, Passions run high. You know, it's all right making an argument to say, well, you played it away at the big clubs, but when you go to Burnley, you expect to put up a performance. It well, didn't do that. Well, I saw some of the performance, and I thought you are being a bit harsh, because I'm being very critical of QPR. There was a time when they when they got the 1-1, when they were very much in the game, actually yeah. controlling the game. Yeah. And then Colker and the defence made that mistake where Ings basically walks through your defence. But milk turns quicker, can Yeah, you? milk, and I hear what you're saying. <laughs> but up until then, you were in the game and you actually put in a very competitive performance. It's just a silly result, silly defence. The difference there. is, though, Kenny, Burnley play as a team. Yes. And I've got a feeling QPR don't. Even, even after you got rid of all the, you know, 60,000, you know, the bus singers of the world, it's still the same problems. Mm. So I've got is a that it? No, I've got a question for you as well. Because <laughs> one of the questions I need is that, in light of the Danny, Danny Muir story of um, Harry and I were about to lose, you know, about to be sacked. What's your sort of kind of views on that? I think they missed the boat, to be honest with you. I think you're going to sack Harry Redknapp. We should have not been taken over by the euphoria of winning home games when we did mm. and, and taking the decision then. Because in my opinion, the one manager that would have definitely kept us up is now at West Bromwich Albion. And clearly the link with Tony Pulis, Joe Francis, yeah. QPR fans would have been like, well, this is, you know, we've got a great optimism in staying up. What you're doing now is you're doing a bit what like Tottenham did, is they got rid mm. of Harry Redknapp and then got Tim Sherwood only to get him taken out again. So, Tim Sherwood does get on well with Les Ferdinand, but I just don't see the point now. You know, you've got to... Someone made the point in our show in the midweek about if it was any other manager, mm. would they have been sacked? I think the question... I think probably they would have done after the Burnley game. Mm. I think they would have done. Man United at home is not going to be easy. So, you, you've got another question, haven't you, Yusuf? Yeah, I mean, do, do you think that your away form will cost you your Premier League place this season? Because you're going to need to get some away points. I think yeah. it will, yeah. And I think ultimately, you know, we've got big games at home. Man United, uh, we've got Chelsea, we've got mm. Arsenal. You know, they're big big games at home. I can't see us winning them. But then I didn't think we'd do well against Man City and, and Liverpool mm. when we did. So it's a difficult one. It has the players react this week. Is is key, you know. Well, if you can't get yourself up for Man United, you're never going to get yourself up. No, the fans will be up for it as well. And, and, you know, QPR is a very small stadium as it is. And, yeah. you know, in terms of like the atmosphere, especially the foreign players. But it can turn both ways, Kenny. Absolutely. You know, you, you know yourself, you've got right that atmosphere. I mean, it can be really in your face mm. and against opponents. But if, if you lose a couple of goals, th you're then turning on the players. And then that's where it could get dangerous. It could get dangerous on mm. Saturday, Kenny, if Man United go 2-3 well, up early. You know? But, you know, like I said, um, in terms of like you've got um, rumours back players are getting in, obviously um, uh, is Fernandez going to spend any money, but I've, I was hearing rumours about, you know, getting um, someone like Jan Unvila, because uh, in terms of, obviously that's something you're, you're not very approving of. No, but we've got the West Ham striker who haven't played a game yeah. all season, Sam Allardyce goes, well, he wasn't good enough to play at West Ham, well, if he's not good enough to play at West Ham, how comes he's good enough well, to play yeah, at QPR? Your style might suit him, but one of the reasons, one of the things that my bugbears at QPR is retaining the ball in midfield in terms of, is Henry really good enough? No, but the problem is, he's been our best midfielder. 
Where do, where do you been? need to sign? Where, where, where do you well, need to strengthen? You definitely need to strengthen at the back and up front in as much that Zamora plays 70 minutes fit. When he plays with Austin at home, mm. it's a very good, but you can't keep relying on Zamora. Austin needs that target man with him. Um, at the back, you need replacements. I mean, Mira Ferdinand's just not... Richard Dunn's passed it. Yeah. Villa let him go. You know, he's 37. Sure, yeah. And Corker, I think, is struggling. I mean, when Corker played last year, he was a good player. But he's struggling, I think, playing against Dunn and... Play with them, you know. Yeah, Clint Hill again. Not Premiership left back, is he? Not at all. But, you know, like, back to your question, because, you know, you just mentioned about... Um, you, you touched on, um, you know, Les Ferdinand. In terms of, like, you've got Chris, Chris Ramsey and Les Ferdinand as part of your background stuff. How significant is that in terms of, you know, say, Harry leaving? Oh, I think it's show, more, I thought it show more, getting a job. I don't know. I think it was more, maybe more of a token gesture. I mean, if, you, if you've supported Rangers in the last 25 years, Les Ferdinand is probably the marquee player but, that you go was top-notch. And I think by having him there sort of justifies mm. the support from Fernandes. You know, Fernandes has got someone in that everyone can relate to. But, but Chris Ramsey does. <sighs> You know, yeah. he's a, he's a, he's a, he, he works at Spurs and he's a gooner. He's a player, he's an Arsenal yeah, junior. Yeah, I know. I know. That's concerning. So you me a you bit. did say that they, you think they've missed the boat. So do you think Harry should stay for the rest of the season? I think that's probably so. I really do. I think he should die by his sword by the end of the season. There's no point changing managers now to get someone in who's unproven. Mm. And the only, I mean, the only one good thing about Sherwood was he did get the best of out of by all, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. That's yeah. what. And I think. I think he needs to sort of, as a full midfielder, he can get that balance of midfield right. Because I still think that you give the ball away too much. Yeah. Defensively, just, you know, it, 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 it parts like the Red Sea. Mm. You know what I mean? A bit I'm like Fulham, really. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> that's for the next part. Of the oh, well, is it? Yeah. Right, okay. Finally, are you going to stay up or are you heading back down? I've got a feeling we're going to go down. And it said me a month ago, I wouldn't have said that, but I, I just think... I just think we're going to go down. I do, because I just think Burnley and Leicester have finished above us, have done well, and I can see them finishing above us, which is a concern. So if, you've, if they finish above you, you ain't got much hope, have you? But one of the questions, is it, is it because of the things I keep on highlighting, your home games against the Everton's, Spurs, Arsenal, you know, May United's just coming up, you've got Chelsea as well. Yeah. Are you saying that you won't get any points out of those games? No, we will get points at home, Kenny, but if we haven't got a point away in, in 10 games, I can't see that changing. The only thing mm. is, if it's, I mean, try to change the style of form uh, by bringing in Tarab. I just think that was a little crafty ploy by the manager to say, look, this is all I've got, when really, you know, mm. Tarab should have been sort of there or thereabouts for the last couple of months, and he wasn't. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's, 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 he's like me. He's built like a brick, um, brick house and, <laughs> and, and not losing much weight, and that's the problem. But if he keeps playing, he's going to lose weight. Yeah, of course. You know, and, and he's a star player. I cannot forget, Tarab is... I was just about to say world class. On mm. his day, he is. Any time he's played Fulham, he's been world class. I yeah. remember a game he scored two goals pretty yeah, much around the whole team. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's young. He's not mm. like he's 32. But I don't think Harry's the man to kind of sit no. there and massage and when, his when, when, and he does, when the manager, When Harry Redknapp doesn't like you, you don't get played. Well, yeah, but Tottenham, he? he didn't get a movie with Tottenham. Yeah. And that's the thing. And, and, and he, but under, under, under um, oh, the name escapes me because I've just gone absolutely blank. Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock. He played a, a we made a captain, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. And he made him the figurehead of the team, yeah. which made, you can't do in the Premiership. But I think people like Joey Barton are too influential. Yes. You know, in, in making sort of a good rapport with a Red Net, become too friendly with Tony Fernandez. Yes. And ultimately, they've probably gone around and said, we don't want Tarab here. He's a bit of a, you know, he sort of mixes it mm. about too much. He's not really a team player. Ultimately, Tarab, Tarab's got more skill in his, in his right toe than Joey, Joey Barton. Of course not. And Joey Barton hasn't really showed leadership qualities in midfield for me this no, season. I think no. he's been poor. The only thing is, he did stay by the club. So you've got to commend well, you're him, him. You're paying him good money. You're paying him 80 grand a week. Yeah, I mean, but when he went to Marseille, I thought, well, that was it. Mm. And he was the one that stayed out of all the players, you know, all the players that have gone, mm. Samba, Remy, all the others, they've all gone. So he did stay. <laughs> well, so you heard it here, QPR are going down. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> So obviously they lost 2-1 to Burnley. Um, we'll move on. Um, we've got, I think we've got a Crystal Palace fan that we're, we're going to get on the phone, I believe. Oh, uh, you're to, keeping me on for this, talk. Talk. Absolutely, because you, yeah. you can help ask some questions. Oh, right, OK. You know. yeah. I thought it was gone. So oh, I, I, mean, I thought it was a gooner. No, we'll no, we'll talk briefly <laughs> about Palace. They beat Spurs 2-1. Great performance from I'll Palace. move up slightly with you, Lincoln. Mm. No, I, think, I thought it was a... Have a little a loving. Well, I think with terms <laughs> of that, again, one of my worries about Crystal Palace, they lift themselves to the big games. But the six-pointers... You know what I mean? But what well, part do you make a, make a, a difference? 
in that sense. Yeah, we would have seen that was his yeah. first game. The yeah, this one was amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Tottenham were in command until it went one-one, yeah. one, and then the spirit of the team got them through. Mm. And we was watching it actually here. We had a Tottenham fan, uh, Rachel, and, and Sam here, who's going to be on the phone soon. Definitely. And ultimately, you know, Palace were out of the game until they scored okay, the think, goal. I think we are we are ready. We've got um, a Crystal Palace supporter, Sam, on the phone. Hi, Sam. Evening, lads. How are we doing? Not hey, too dude, bad mate. on yourself? Yeah, well, excellent. On the back of a great result of the weekend. That's, <laughs> that's two games in a row we've won. So is that, is that your, the kickstart to your season? Well, it, if it's not, we're in trouble. Put it that way. I think the board had to act. Uh, I know you've got Peter in with you who, who had an opinion on Neil Warnock and it proves to be very correct. <laughs> um, we, we didn't seem to fire under him. We got a couple of good results, but we dropped a lot of points where we should have picked things up. Things didn't go for Warnock, but the board acted quickly. And I think they got the only man for the job that, that we could have got. We punched above our weight with Pardew a bit, really. If he didn't have the Palace connection, I don't think we'd have a manager of his stature at the club. You know, a lot of questions as well. Is that, um, in terms of um, you know, Pardew's appointment, what do you think of the, his appointment overall? And would he be able to motivate you, your players and get to so-called lesser opposition? Because I think under Warnock, you had great performance against Liverpool... And you know you had, you performed you formed well away from running at Swansea, but against the, your the six pointers you struggled a bit. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a fair point, Kenny. I think the ref went against us in a few of the games. I go back to the West Brom game where we should have got something out of that more than we did. Um, do you know what? I think with with Pardew, I'm looking. For, I think there's just a bit of a it's a really good fit possibly. You know, the fans really get behind the team at home. You know, we we know that we're we're meant to be the best fans in the league. I wouldn't necessarily say that's a certain thing because we can turn on our team as well as anyone else. But we'll make a lot of noise. Pardew's a club legend. The fit seems to be right, and we've had a few managers in the past where that's not it's not worked. But I I think he's a good appointment. I don't know who else there was out there. I wouldn't want a Tim Sherwood at my club. I wouldn't want an unproven manager from outside the UK that's never managed in a relegation battle. The only man that could have taken the job that wouldn't have done, and I would have had him in a heartbeat, was Tony Pulis to come back. A quick question for you, Sam. Obviously, Zaha came on, made a, a great impression. Do you think you'll play more first-team f- football uh, now Pardew's there? And secondly, who do you want in the transfer window? Or where do you need to strengthen? Oh, well, the third, answer to the first question is, I heard Kenny talking earlier, and he nominated Jason Punch as one of his possible players of the week. I actually was slating Punching when I was on the show <laughs> Saturday watching along. Punching was having a terrible game. He was so predictable to read. He cuts in, he cuts in, he cuts in. But he came up with the goods and it was a, good, it was a great goal. Um, I can't take that away from the lad. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see some changes with the Palace lineup. Not only because he's signed some players, but Dwight Gale was shuffled out wide and it, it just didn't work for the lad. He has got to be down the middle with the big man and... I'm not so sure he'll be in the first team shake-up. He may go back to the bench for a bit. But, yeah, I'd be amazed if we don't see Wilfred Zaha starting games. He, he had a real impact. And it was the first time bar the Newcastle game this season that I saw the real Zaha come on and really scare defenders, really give them a good go and have an end product as well, which is what he needs to improve on. Um, make no mistake, in the Championship, he got away with it. Premier League, you've got to have an end product. And he, he looked up and picked the ball out and... He's a great player and he has so much potential and I hope this season he kicks on. With regards to the transfer window, um, Sonogo is a good signing. Uh, I think anything regarding our forward line, we need to shake it up a bit. I, there's talk that Pardew's going to go in for another striker. Not sure that's an area we'll need to strengthen now. We've got a few different options. I wouldn't mind seeing possibly a little bit of cover at the back. I, I think Delaney's a great defender and he's done very well this season for us, as is Scott Dam. But if one of those gets injured, we are going to be struggling a little bit. So I think that's an area of concern if we get picked up a knock. You know, I'm, I'm pleased to say if we can get them both back from their respective international tournaments, we've got Yednak to come back mm. and Yannick Balassi. One more quality addition. I think we'll have enough quality to stay up this season. I'm pretty confident. So it, you do think you will be safe, ultimately? I don't, I don't think we're going to rock it up the table. I think it will still be the last few games of the season before we're officially safe. But I look at those teams around us. Yeah. If West Brom were to lose their star man, who's reputed to be unhappy and things, they're going to really struggle. They're only a point ahead of us. You look at Villa, who have been in free for and are appalling this season. I mean, I can't believe that if they don't sign any quality, they're going to be OK. Um, Sunderland, interesting signing Defoe. But 
you know, a goal scorer is not going to necessarily keep them up. Burnley are the ones that have outshone everybody. And your bottom three of Hull, who I didn't think would be there, but are. QPR, who... I, I don't mean to cut in there, Sam. I think we're running out of time. So I think that's Palace safe, QPR down. I think that's fair to say. But thanks, I, I think, thanks for joining us, Sam. No problem, guys. Have a great show. Right, thanks, 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 Sam.